everybody. Welcome to LPL's PJ Chapter Book Storytime. We've been reading over the last week, couple of weeks, we've been reading How to Read, How to Read, How to Eat Fried Worms by Thomas Rockwell. And I hope you're enjoying this story as much as I am. When we left our, our um, story characters last time, Alan, the boy who had um, orig originally set up the, the challenge, um, to eat 15 worms to Billy, was getting a little bit nervous. Alan, the Billy has now gotten through five worms eating them, and Alan's a little bit worried that he may indeed have to give Billy $50. That was the, the bet, and um, that's making him a little bit nervous. So he came up with this kind of devious plan to get Billy to stop eating the worms. He told Billy that eating worms was not only not healthy for you, they could be downright poisonous. And initially, Billy didn't believe him. He said, no, you're just trying to, to get out of the bet. So then uh, that night, Billy went to bed after eating his worm of the day. He woke up in the middle of the night with a tummy ache. So he's thinking, uh-oh, what if Alan was not making that story up? What if it was indeed true? So he's going to go and check in with his mom to, to find out what, what's going on. So let's see what happens in tonight's chapters. Oh, excuse me, I'm just going to have a little sip of my nice warm tea. Nice chamomile tea before bed is, is, is uh, can be quite relaxing. All right. Chapter 15, 3.15 3 a.m. His mother reached out and switched on the light. What kind of pain, Billy? Remember, he was going to go tell his mom about his bellyache. He stood beside the bed, clutching his stomach. In my stomach. Oh, there it goes again, I think. Did you eat something before bed? She was pulling on her bathrobe. John, John. She shook her husband's shoulder. He mumbled sleepily. Did you eat candy or something before bed, Billy? Worms groaned to Billy. Worms? John, John. Billy, what kind of worms? Regular worms, night crawlers. She felt his forehead, lifted his chin to look at his face. You don't have a temperature. How many worms did you eat? Five, two boiled, three fried, with ketchup, mustard, horseradish, salt, pepper, and butter to make them taste better. Fried? Ketchup? Taste better? John, wake up! I had this bet with Alan. Oh, he groaned again. Take your hands away. Where does it hurt now? Show me. Well, it doesn't hurt so much now. It's just rumbling and gurgling, something awful. It's. Then why are you groaning? asked his father, sitting up. Because I'm afraid I'm going to start hurting. Going to start hurting. Do you think I'm going to die, Daddy? Worms, his father asked. Ordinary worms? Earthworms? Billy nodded. How many did you eat this evening? One this afternoon. I've eaten one every day for the last five days, but they weren't little ones. They were night crawlers, huge ones, as big as snakes almost. His father lay back down, pulling the covers up around his shoulders. Don't worry, eating one night crawler a day for six weeks wouldn't hurt you. Go back to bed. It's probably all the ketchup and mustard that's upsetting your stomach. Drink a glass of warm water. John, are you sure? said Billy's mother. It doesn't seem to me that worms could be a very healthy thing to eat. John? His father snuggled deeper into the covers. I didn't say any eating worms would turn him into an all-American fullback. I just said that they wouldn't hurt him. Now let's go to sleep. Billy's mother glanced at Billy, shivering beside the bed. Oh, uh, Billy, shivering beside the bed in bare feet and pajamas, then shook her husband again. John, John, wake up. I think you should call Dr. McGrath. You don't really know whether or not eating worms is harmful. I know you don't. Billy's father groaned and sat up. Now look. I am not going to call Dr. McGrath at 3.30 in the morning to ask him if it's all right for my son to eat worms. That's flat. Secondly, I do know that Billy's not going 
to die before morning. If worms were poisonous, which they're not, he would have been laid up before this. Billy, you've been eating worms for five days? Billy nodded. All right. And thirdly, I ate a live crayfish when I was in college and have suffered no discernible ill effects. And fourthly, I am going to sleep. Billy's mother slipped her feet into her slippers, stood up and buttoned her bathrobe, and then leaned over the bed and shook her husband's shoulder. John? John, I won't be able to sleep until you call. John? John, what about the tapeworm or fungus? John, wake up. Billy, you go back to bed. Your father will call Dr. McGrath. John? John? Billy lay in bed, listening to his mother and father arguing in their bedroom. He could only make out a word here and there. Usually when his father started to shout, only to be shushed immediately by his mother. Billy got sleepier and sleepier. No, his stomach had stopped rumbling and gurgling. It was warm and cozy under the covers after standing on the cold floor in his bare feet. Then, in the middle of in the midst of a foggy drowse, he heard someone dialing the phone in the hall outside his parents' bedroom, and then his father said, Poison control, and explained the case. Then there was a silence. Billy heard the water running in the bathroom, and then his father said, You're sure? These weren't little ones. These were night crawlers. A no, uh, no long range ill effects? <laughs> I, I bet, I think. And the next thing Billy knew, sunlight was streaming through his window and Emily was skipping down the hall past his door singing, half a pound of, of tuppence rice, half a pound of treacle. That's the way the money goes. His father shouted down the stairs, Helen, do you know where my green tie with the red stripes is? It sounds like life is back to normal. Chapter 16, The Sixth Worm. Billy glumped, uh, gulped a triumph. I'm sorry, let me try that again. Billy gulped it triumphantly, serene, untroubled. By the door, Alan glowered, his mind racing. Oh, he's going to do it. He'll win. What'll I do? Fifty dollars. Joe sat on an overturned pail, whistling and gazing carelessly about, sneaking a glance now and then at Billy. What had gone wrong? Why hadn't he cracked? Outside, Tom lurked surf uh, sheepishly in the bushes behind the stone wall, peering into the barn. Now, Tom is kind of Billy's friend. He's been on Billy's side through this whole event. And I don't know if you remember when we read last time, they tried to get Tom to eat a worm because he kept saying, you know, go ahead, Billy, you can do it. Come on. Think, just think it's a fish, fish, fish. And when push came to shove, Tom not only didn't eat the worm, but he ran away. That's why he's lurking around outside. So now we're on to chapter 17, the seventh worm. Billy ate it offhand, sideways, reading a comic book. Alan and Joe squatted glumly in the barn door watching him as Billy was daubing horseradish sauce on, sauce on the last bite. Tom's head appeared in a corner of the grimy window. He waved tentatively to Billy. Ignoring him, Billy gulped down the last bite, wiped his mouth, and tucked his comic book under his arm, strolling airily out of the barn, remarking over his shoulder, See you tomorrow, fellas. Chapter 18 is the eighth worm. Where's Joe? asked Billy, spreading mustard down the length of the fried worm. He wouldn't come, said Alan silently, sullenly. It's no fair putting on that much mustard. Ha <laughs> ha, said Billy. Who says? I could put on as much as I'd like of whatever I like, and you know it. Why shouldn't he, wouldn't he come? How should I know? Billy swooshed a bit of worm around in ketchup and horseradish sauce. sauce, sauce. I know why he didn't. Yeah, you're so smart. Big deal. 
Alan couldn't get the $50 out of his head. What was his father going to say when he told him that he bet $50 and lost? Jeez, he nodded his thumbnail. He wouldn't come because he knows I've won. He knows I could eat 20 worms if I had to. Yeah, yeah, well, you ain't won yet. There's still seven to go. You act so big. Wait until you begin to feel it in your stomach. You think you know everything. Yeah, well, you'll see. You wait. Huh, said Billy. You think you can scare me and talking like this? Fairly. He strolled past Alan out into the sunlight. Hi, said Tom, popping up from behind a, the bushes. Psst, said Billy disdainfully and walked on. I think he was kind of disgusted with his friend Tom. Chapter 19th, The Ninth Worm. That's not a worm, yelled Billy. How can it be a worm? Jeez, it must be two feet long. It's a worm, said Alan stubbornly. It's just like all the others. I rolled it in cornmeal and fried it. It's over two feet long, screeched Billy. He knew something was up. Otherwise, Joe wouldn't have come back, slouching in the doorway, pretending to be getting up staring up at the clouds. But Billy noticed. He kept glancing at Alan and him, and Tom was peering in the window again. Something was up. Look, said Alan, I'll cut it. You can see for yourself it's a worm. There, see? Come on, eat it up. We ain't got all day. Joe and me have to go to Shushan with his father. Billy poked at the huge worm with his fork. Something sure was up. He ate the piece that Alan had cut, looking the rest of the worm over carefully as he chewed. He ate another bite. Ugh. He'd forgotten to dip it in the horseradish sauce. Come on, come on, come on, said Alan. Yeah, said Joe. Eat it up, Billy. We gotta go. I'll never be able to eat the whole thing, he thought Billy. It'd choke me. It's too much yuck at once. Half, he croaked. I'll eat half. This is some sort of ringer. There's never been a worm this long. Okay, said Alan. Then the bet's off. Suit yourself. Come on, Joe. He chickened out. Let's go. All right, all right, said Billy, playing, paying, uh, playing for time. The whole thing. Make yourself sick, said Alan. He's too anxious, thought Billy. What's going on? Leave him alone, said Joe. Let him eat it. It's his stomach. He's trying to cover for Alan, thought Billy. He ate another bite. Then he began to scrape the cornmeal carefully off the worm with his knife. What are you doing, said Alan. I think I'll have it plain today. No cornmeal. That's not fair. You can't... Glue, screamed Billy all of a sudden. Glue? You glued two crawlers together? Jeez, you bunch of lousy cheats. Tom, Tom, look at what they tried to pull. Glue. Panting, Tom bent over the plate. Oh, you're right. Jeez. Alan kicked a pail, clattering against the wall. I told you it wouldn't work, he screamed at Joe. All right, so it didn't work. You couldn't think of anything better. That's cheating, said Billy. I ought to win right now. You cheated. Fifteen worms in fifteen days, yelled Joe. You ain't won yet. But you cheated, shouted Tom. So what? They argued and yelled, striding here and there about the barn, sprawling against the posts, flinging up their arms, kicking walls, banging down on a pail on orange a pail or orange crate and squeezing their heads between their hands it doesn't make any difference joe yelled at billy it didn't work you didn't fall for it if you'd eaten the whole thing and then found out it was two worms glued together then you could have claimed to win because alan was cheating big mouth shouted alan at the horse stall where he was kicking the slats in who thought it up? Not me. Who cares who thought it up? Shouted Tom. It's still cheating. 
A pig looked in at the door and then wandered away. Joe ran out and stuck his head under the faucet of the kitchen steps. A minute later, he came running back, dripping and yelling, That's not true! What's not true, said Billy, turning around from Al shouting at Alan. Whatever you said. Well, what did I say? It doesn't make any difference. You're a liar and a cheat and you do anything. And so anything you say isn't true. Oh, you're crazy. Even Hitler or, or Jack the Ripper or sometimes, oh, sometimes said things that were true. It's impossible to lie all the time. Behind them, Tom lay down on his back and said, Ah! Alan and Joe and Billy turned to look at him. What's the matter with you? Ah! 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 Silence. A bird flew in and then out through a broken window in the loft. Well, so said Billy, yeah, I see what you mean. He and Alan and Joe sat down on the overturned orange crates. After a while, Joe said, Anyway, I was right. If Billy'd eaten it, it would have been cheating. But he didn't, so it's not. That's the, uh, the bet's still on. The pig looked in at the door again. A pig's loose, said Alan. Look. Where, said Billy. Oh, boy, come on. We gotta catch it. He jumped up. The pig bolted. Hoo-wee, yelled Billy, dashing out, dashing out. Tom and Joe and Alan scrambled after him. Hmm. Chapter 20 is called Billy's Mother. Well, so let's see what's going to happen. So I guess Alan's ploy to, to, uh, to trick Billy into eating an especially big worm and then giving up the bet did not work out. Billy is on to him. So let's see. What is he up to? Ten worms, I think, he's now eaten. So we'll, we'll see how that, um, what happens with, with the, the gang tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed tonight's version of PJ Chapter Book Time, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.